Good morning, and you are welcome here this morning to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist and the baptism of Isaac Edward Fitzpatrick into the household of God. We continue our liturgy in the bulletin on page three. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnants of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I shall not fear any longer or be dismayed I'm sorry. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be, any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise for David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Hear what the Holy Spirit is telling God's people. Thanks be to God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy 
habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will live on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. To endure everything with patience, while joyful giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, all words or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the, be the beginning, the first burn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
freedom her bondage breaks, and night is turned to day. In Christ all races meet, their ancient fruits forgetting, the whole round world complete, from sunrise to its setting. There's a page turn. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Jesus Christ. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching Jesus on the cross. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise Praise to you, Jesus Christ. Please be seated, and I hope you can hear me. I'm all mic'd up here, so two mics instead of one. And if you know my voice, you know I probably don't need either one. So here we are on this last Sunday after Pentecost as a cycle of seasons in our church year comes to an end. As I stand here between one ending and another beginning, I wonder, where has the time gone? Last year at this time, I was grieving the loss of the bright spirit that was Birdie Lee, and not really looking forward to Thanksgiving or Christmas. As I have marked the changing seasons of this church year, Birdie's spirit has walked with me. But if you knew Birdie, you know that she wouldn't want any of us to be sad for long because joy of life 
and engagement with the Spirit of God seemed to dance through that little body of hers. So on this Christ the King Sunday, as my sister Lynn's grandbaby is about to be baptized, I reflected deeply on Birdie's life journey and felt her joyous spirit keenly. So let's hope neither my sister Lynn nor I cry, but there is little chance of that. <laughs> now, I call Lynn my sister because we've journeyed together on some pretty rough roads. And as my cousin Bertie would say, we're surviving it. <laughs> now, I won't go into the rough roads, but along the way, we found comfort and joy, laughter and good times, including satyrs, lunch and dinner dates, and party planning for that reluctant birthday girl, Miss Lee. Now, to be preacher when her child's child, and yes, I remember when that child was a child, <laughs> is welcomed and sealed into the household of God. Well, that is truly a joy. When Peter told me about the baptism, I thought, what a great introduction to Advent, as this tiny soul helps center us in joy and anticipation as we await the birth of the Christ child. And then I looked at the lessons, <laughs> and I wondered, how do I marry Christ on the cross with the joy of new life? And you know, Peter is always doing that to me with the lessons. <laughs> And of course, that was the answer. In today's lessons, we are given a snapshot of a story at two very different points in the journey of Christ among us. But it's not the whole story. It's the beginning and ending of one journey and the start of another. On the one hand, there is a foretelling of a promise in Jeremiah when the Lord says he will raise up for David a righteous branch who shall reign as king and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. On the other hand, in Luke, we find Jesus nailed by wrists and ankles, hanging upon a cross between two criminals branded a criminal himself. It's no wonder that we find ourselves struggling to understand how the rich promise at journey start can, be, can appear to be ending so badly. We wonder, where is the power or the glory? Where is the kingdom? What we fail to understand is that the crucifixion is the beginning and not the end of the story. Despite the tragic scenes of the cross on this Christ the King Sunday, we learn anew that God's hope and God's promise will prevail. For in Christ there is life and faith, hope and love. For amidst his pain and anguish, Jesus prays for his persecutors. And though belittled and demeaned, he offers forgiveness. Though many might see the cross as an ending, as people of faith we know in reality that although the flesh and blood manifestation of God died on that cross, as the psalmist asserts, the Lord of hosts is with us. Therefore, we shall not fear, even though the earth be moved and the mountains topple into the depths of the sea. Christ died for us that he might live through us and build the kingdom through us we are being invited to explore a new meaning of kingdom. 
This kingdom is, all, is about all of us, of every hue and from every nation, who are Christ bearers. We are and must be the manifestation of the kingdom in the world. And that kingdom building, transformed life is at the heart of baptism. Baptism is clearly a time of new beginnings in the life of the church and in the life of a family. In a few minutes, Peter will ask Isaac's parents and godparents, will you, through your prayers and witness, help this child grow into the full stature of Christ? As I thought about that phrase, full stature of Christ, I realized that each of us, as we are baptized, become Christ bearers a part of Christ at work in the world, at work building up the kingdom. Now, I have always loved baptisms, not only because I get to renew my baptismal vows, but because as we affirm the journeys we share and renew our engagement with the world, we are being invited to live large, and to love big. At its heart, baptism is a time in which I most immediately feel God's presence in the midst of us. It is a, a time during which we are invited to look upon the works of the Lord and what greater works than the birth and raising up of a child. Now, if it was my place to tell God how best to shape Isaac's life, then I would take a page from the life of Miss Lee. I believe hers is the kind of life that Christ the King is calling each of us to. I wish for him a life filled with God's holy and life-giving spirit. I wish for him endless curiosity, boundless energy, and a joyous love for everyone, whether they be two or four-footed. I wish for him a life large in faith that is a daily witness to God's abundant grace. I wish for him a life of service, of compassion, and of love that never wavers in seeking ways to bear Christ in the world. I wish for him a life grounded in the knowledge that we are all children of God, worthy to be loved and to love because God loved us. Christ the King has set us free to love and that makes it the perfect lesson for a baptism. So for all my wishes, this I know. Christ the King has got this. As we baptize Isaac, I know that with Christ as his shepherd, he shall not fear or be dismayed or go missing. Christ reigns supreme because he lived the life he preached, a life lived for others, embracing all with an open heart and with divine love. And ultimately, that is the life that Isaac is being ushered into through baptism, a life lived in witness to God's grace and God's love. Amen. Amen. Are you crying? I invite the congregation to rise and join me in Leave Us Him 121.
the congregation may be seated. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? You renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? And this is addressed to the congregation. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Isaac in his life in Christ? Yeah. Let us join with Isaac, who is being committed to Christ, and renew our own baptismal covenant. And I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for Isaac, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the waters of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. I will take a baby. Hello, young man. Hello. Isaac Edward, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are doing a good job. Hello? Yes. Isaac Edward, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and you are marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. And the peace of Jesus Christ be with all of you, my friends. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. When you go back to your seat. Peace. Peace. He did so well. He did do well. He ate the oh. entire service. Okay. You want to say hello? Say hi, Isaac. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hey, congratulations. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Who likes you? That's my voice. Peace be with you, everybody. Say hi. Hi. Say hello. Oh, okay. Wonderful. I'm going to walk down the aisle so he can be introduced to everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us here this morning for this special occasion. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, another wonderful event in the life of the greater church that's connected to this church happened yesterday. Uh, the Reverend Dion Johnson was elected the next bishop of the Diocese of Missouri. Dion was an associate rector here 
uh, and he left to take a church in Brighton, Michigan when I came in 2006 as priest in charge. Uh, and so he's had a very successful pastorate at his church in Michigan, and he was elected, he was on the slate and elected yesterday. His consecration will be the 25th of April, and our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, uh, will be the bishop who does the consecration. So very exciting news, and uh, a bishop out of our own congregation, so that's just wonderful. Uh, it's that time of year when we are asking for donations for the flowers that will beautify the church for Christmas tide. Uh, and these envelopes are on the table in the, uh, the Great Hall. You may either make them in memory of someone or in thanksgiving for someone or something. So please do that and we will uh, be able to make this place gorgeous for Christmas. It's also cookie walk time, uh, and cookie walk will be on the 14th of December, but we need bakers. This is a, a signature event in the life of the parish every year. Uh, and Christina Forward is back there, and you can see her if you have questions. Uh, but we're looking for people to bake six dozen cookies, uh, their best holiday cookies for that event. There'll be a bazaar attendant to it as well, so there'll be arts and crafts to purchase as well as the cookies. And we are continuing for the second year with a new ministry where we have adopted 12 families who uh, economically cannot provide for Christmas for themselves. And so we have a tree in the Great Hall that has ornaments on it with uh, a, a gift that a desire, what's desired by a member of each of the members of those families. Um, and so we ask that um, you be able to participate by taking one of those ornaments and purchasing that gift. You may also uh, give a cash donation if you don't want to shop and we have people who will do that for you. In addition to the gifts, we will provide the families with a gift card uh, so that they can buy a Christmas dinner. Uh, and each family will have a family photograph uh, for this uh, type of uh, situation. A lot of people can't afford a family photograph, so they'll get that as well. So if you can help participate, that would be wonderful. And today's the last day for the collections by the Daughters of the King for your neighbor's cloak. And they're collecting gently used children's toys and bicycles for this month. So if you have some of those at home and would like to donate them, they will go to St. Luke's on the west side, which serves a, a very impoverished neighborhood. So that would be wonderful. Uh, for the four weeks of uh, Advent on each Sunday, beginning next week the 1st, the adult forum between the two services uh, will be a video series by Amy Jill Levine called Light of the World. Uh, this is a DVD and book uh, program. You need to purchase the book yourself on an online purveyor. Uh, the DVD, obviously, we have. Uh, this is very, we used Amy Jill Levine during our Lenten study this year. Amy Jill Levine is a modern Orthodox Jewish woman who is the professor of New Testament theology at Vanderbilt University. So she offers a very unique perspective on the Christian um, texts. Uh, and I know you'll enjoy her, wonder, uh, her wonderful program. Uh, let's see, there'll be a Eucharist on Thanksgiving this coming Thursday for those who would like to uh, come and celebrate and offer Thanksgiving that way. It'll take place around the altar at 10.30 in the morning. There's a table in the Great Hall with Advent materials for both adults and children. Uh, I do hope you take a look at that uh, and engage in a Lenten discipline of reading reflections and scripture and whatnot. There are also the rings and the candles to make an Advent wreath at home if you would like one for your daily devotions as well. And let's see. The reeds and the greens and the maple syrup are in with our Boy Scout troop. Uh, that is their major fundraiser, and they're in today. If you ordered those, you can pick them up afterwards. And Laura Borgioni, our junior warden. Good morning, everyone. Good morning.
Thank you so much, Laura. And uh, mark your calendars on the 8th of December, which is the second Sunday of Advent, we will have a very special guest at the 1030 service and at coffee hour. And that's all I will say about that, but make sure you are here that day. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, which begins on page 11 of the bulletin. Please know that all people without exception are welcome to receive the sacrament at this Jesus table. In our prayers today, we give thanksgiving for the election of Dion Johnson as the next Bishop of Missouri, and for those celebrating birthdays, especially Melissa Winberry, Ann Elliott, Kira Walters, Mark Biggerman, Catherine Wolford, Lisa Fletcher and Haley Neuendorf. We give thanks for the baptism of Isaac Edward this morning. And we also pray for those people who have been commended to our prayers. We remember especially Ben, Beth, David, James, Jessica, Joetta, John, Judy, Karen, Mara, Maureen, Renee, and Susan. And we also pray for those who have died, especially G.L. Lockwood, father of Audie Schneider, in whose memory the altar flowers are presented today. And we pray also for Laura Bishop Heckman, a dear friend of our Leslie Swain Fox, who lost her battle with cancer this week. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your daughters and sons, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Our post-communion prayer can be found on page 14. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. 
My sisters and brothers, may God give you the grace to never sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous now for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And may God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, and the Spirit's outpouring be with you this day and forever. Amen. For the Lord our God shall come and shall take his harvest home. From his field shall in that day all offenses purge away. Give his angels charge at last. Test to cast, but with little ears to store in his garner evermore. Even so, Lord, quickly come to thy final harvest home. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the love of God's Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.